ready here is Golden Soul and Robbie Alvarado take up position in that outside stall. They're all in line and we are ready for the start. They're off and the Belmont Stakes. Good starts for both Oxbow and Orb, and it's Frank Daddy and Freedom Child going out to the front, and Oxbow is away running in third to the outside of them. Giant Finish came out running in fourth. Palace Malice is fifth just off the pace today and caught four wide as they make their charge into that first turn. Then Incognito, a wide run for the Philly Unlimited Budget. She's caught well out there. So it's going to be Frank Daddy to make the pace with Freedom Child running in second, and check out that quarter. 23 seconds flat, extremely fast for this mile and a half distance and Oxbow is right on the pace three wide. Palace Malice follows in fourth by another two lengths. Then Incognito moving up on the far outside unlimited budget giant finish has the rail. It's another two lengths back to Vijack who races on the outside. Will take charges right in that pack as well and down toward the inside revolutionary and overanalyzes there too. Now Orb is second last on the back stretch just ahead of Golden Soul as they continue through a half mile in 46 and 3 fifth seconds. Up the back stretch they go. Here in the Belmont and Oxbow and Gary Stevens have a narrow lead. On the inside is Freedom Child and their noses apart up front. And Palace Malice is two lengths off of them. Frack Daddy has retreated a bit. Fourth on the inside. Revolutionary comes on in fifth. We look back for Orb. He is still near the back of the pack, but he's picking up his stride now as they move for the far turn. He's still 10 lengths off the lead. And as they round the far turn, it is Oxbow on the outside and Freedom Child along the rail. And Alice Malice and Mike Smith join them. And now Orb is rolling on the far outside. He's eighth. He has moved into seventh, and he continues to gain ground outside of horses. It is Oxbow and Palace Ballas, and these two have taken over the lead. Revolutionary is four lengths behind. Orb is up running at fourth now. He's outside of Revolutionary as they make their way to the top of the stretch. Oxbow and Palace Ballas, and they're into the stretch, and it's Palace Ballas who has taken the lead as they come inside the final furlong. Palace Malice, a furlong to run. Oxbow is second. Orb is third to the outside. The Palace Malice comes inside the final 16th of a mile in the clear from Oxbow and Orb. It is going to be Palace Malice and Mike Smith and the Belmont Stakes. Oxbow was second. Orb was third. Incognito was fourth. And Revolutionary was fifth. So it's a different winner for each Triple Crown race this year. This one goes to Palace Malice. And Todd Fletcher with the celebration as Palace Malice. They took the blinkers off, and typically that dulls some of their speed. Remember, he had shown speed in the Derby, very much speed, and then faded in the latter stages. Today, he did not fade. Mike Smith, another veteran jockey, was just timing it perfectly, made his move to get past Oxbow to win the Belmont Stakes. Palace Malice finally living up to the belief that Todd Fletcher had in him last summer, thought he was his best two-year-old in the barn. Every time I talked to him this spring, he said, probably the best horse working for me at this moment is Palace Malice. Yet he disappointed time after time after time. Mike Smith riding the fine line, abusing enough of his speed not to fight it, yet rashing it out. And boy, did the horse show a lot of heart hanging in there the last quarter of a mile. I think the Kentucky Derby was a wake-up call for him. With those blinkers and all that speed that he showed, I think it sharpened him up for this race. And how about Mike Smith? After such triple crown frustration a year ago, second. Second, second, second. Here, Mike Smith gets the money. And I tell you what, no excuses at all for the favorite orb. They went the last quarter mile in this race in almost 27 and three fifth seconds. They were crawling the last quarter of a mile, yet orb still could not pick up the early leaders. Can you listen to those? Mike Smith saying a good boy to Palace Malice. 16 of the last 20 Derby win uh, Belmont winners have come within three links of the lead turn of your home. 11 of them within a length. Now, Palace Malice fit that bill perfectly. Mike Smith re really did a good job sitting off Gary Stevens for as long as he could. I, I really had my doubts whether Palace Malice could kick on enough to clear the field, but this is, a this is all about the determination and courage 
of Palace Malice and a really well-judged ride by Mike. And Palace Malice is tired right here. Oxbow's even more tired, but there was no one in the field, including Orb, who could finish strongly enough to come and get him at a mile and a half. So Palace Malice, the seventh Belmont winner since 2000 to win after running in the Derby and then skipping the Preakness. Let's go to Donna. Well, Tom, Mike just told me a little secret. He's, he was happy to find out that uh, Oxbow and Gary Stevens held on for a second. What did Gary say to you whenever it looked like you had more horse than him? I was moving better than him at the 3 8 pole. And, man, he looked over. <laughs> and just like a big brother telling a little brother, he said, that, you go on with a big boy. You're moving better than me. <laughs> How nice. Hey, what a difference a race makes. 12th in the Kentucky Derby, comes away with the win today in the Belmont Stakes. What made the difference with him today, Mike? The blinkers off, Donna, honestly. Ran through the bridle. It was really a sneaky good race if you go back and look at it. Never took a breather one time. Today, the whole time, he's just just enjoying the trip and sucking all the air in, and I, just, I was full of run heading for home. Speaking of enjoying the trip, you rode in your first Belmont Stakes 23 years ago. I hate to tell on you, but your second Belmont Stakes win today, what's it mean to you? It's incredible. You know, and I really want to thank Cock Campbell and all of Dogwood for sticking with me. They could have very easily took me off, Don, and they stuck with the old guy, and it paid off, man. Thank you, Todd, and everyone. Thank you. Talk to me about Orb and Oxbow. They were second and third. Did you have them sort of in your sights? I realize you were in front, but were you looking over your shoulder the whole time? You know, I, I was to my outside because there's five of us in there for Todd. You know, we all want to kind of help each other out, but yet give ourselves a chance as well. Didn't want to hang Rosie out too far, you know, so I'm trying to do it just a little both. But the whole key was getting in, in, him into that rhythm that he was in. He's bred to run all day. Worrying about your own horse. Well done. Thank you. Tom, Hall of Famer ride from a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and the second Belmont win, Donna, for Mike Smith. He won aboard Drosselmeyer in 2010. Here in the Dogwood Stable Colors, it's Palace Malice and Mike Smith to win the Belmont Stakes and win it decisively. Mike Smith with another celebration, and Todd Smith celebrates his second Belmont win as well. There's the uh, hero of the hour, Cot Campbell, the 85-year-old man who pioneered the partnership concept with Dogwood Stable, leading Palace Malice into the winner's circle after paying $29.60. Oxbow in second, or was third, the exacta $323 for a $2 wager. You see the trifecta and the superfecta, a dollar bet, got you $10,301. And here is the complete order of finish with Palace Malice, the winner. Palace Malice winning clear of Oxbow and Orr. The margin three and a quarter links. Incognito, a long shot, finishing in fourth. Then Revolutionary, unlimited budget, the Philly. Overanalyzed by Jack, Golden Soul. Will take charge, giant finish, midnight taboo. Freedom Child, really faded badly. And Frack Daddy finishing last. And Orb, as Cott Campbell has a <laughs> winning smile, Todd Pletcher with his second Belmont victory. And what happened to Orb? Well, he was far back early, which is exactly where he needed to be, given the pace. The first half mile run only two-fifths slower than Secretariat's record split back in 73. Made a big move, looked like a winner at the top of the stretch. Here's the deal. We overrated the top three finishers in the Kentucky Derby. The pace of that race was so fast that the horses in the back of the pack had a huge advantage. Where was Revolutionary today? Fifth, where was Golden Soul? Ninth, all three of those horses are good, but not as good as we thought they were coming out of Louisville. He even looked like a winner here, Get Orb, as he picks off horses one by one, turning for home. But in the end, he was just too flat and too hard to catch the front running, at least at the quarter pole, the front running Palace Malice. Oxbow, home, he's holding his own in there. Uh, hey, no, listen. Success has a price to pay, and the price to pay for Oxbow today was nobody was going to leave him alone. Right. And on a horse that needs to be up in the mix, you're at the mercy of the speed around you, and, and Freedom Child hooked him up early, then Gary took the lead, but Palace Malice under Mike Smith, completely legitimate, but never let Gary get a breather because he knew how dangerous he would be if he did. Oxbow was hurt by the fast pace in the Kentucky Derby, finished sixth. He was helped by the incredibly slow pace he was allowed to set in the Freakness, which he won. This race, the pace did him no favors either, but yet he's a tough, tough horse. He held in there courageously to finish second, even though he was exhausted the last eighth of a mile. And the two fast friends, Palace Malice, ridden by Mike Smith, and Oxbow by Gary Stevens. And Mike Smith gets the best of it today. 
The two old guys, Tom. One, two. <laughs> I love it. Maybe you'll come back out of retirement after all, Jerry. <laughs> and talking about the uh, Lucas coaching tree, Pletcher, one of his protégés, wins it. Lucas himself runs second. And another protégé, Kieran McLaughlin, runs fourth. And Mike Smith with another sterling performance in a big race. We've come to expect it from Mike. He has this amazing workout routine. He may have a little age, but he's really fit, and he's got good judgment as well. Celebrate, Mike. Alice Malice, the winner of the Belmont Stakes. Let's go down to the winner's circle now and join Bob Costas. All right, Tom, David O'Rourke of the New York Racing Association is here to make the presentation to Cot Campbell, the founder of Dogwood Stable. Thank you, Bob. On behalf of the New York Racing Association, I'm delighted to present the Belmont Stakes Trophy to Cot Campbell, president of Dogwood Stables. Cot has done so much for our sport. Congratulations on a wonderful performance by Palace Miles. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is the mother of all great moments, I'll tell you that. I'm proud for Dogwood and for my great partners, Snyder and Orphis and Smith and Pig and Myers. I'm proud for Aiken, South Carolina. They'll be dancing in the streets right now. And I'm proud of Todd, one of the great trainers of all times, and Mike Smith, one of the great riders. And for the horse, the horse, the horse. I'm so proud of him. I believe that sums the whole thing up, plus acts as a perfect segue to Lafitte Pinkai, who is with both trainer and jockey. Lafitte? All right, Bob, here with Todd Pletcher. Todd, this was supposed to be your derby horse, your most hyped two-year-old in your stable last summer. He loses six of his first seven. How gratifying is this Belmont win with Palace Malice? Uh, it's huge. It's huge. You know, we, we always felt like he had a big one in him. We were just waiting for it to finally develop. I kept telling Mr. Campbell, this horse is training unbelievable. I, I know he's got a big one. We just need him to put it all together. After running 12th in the derby, had you lost any confidence in him going in? I didn't, you know, he just got a little rank with the blinkers and the sloppy track that day, but when he came back here, he trained so well, and his work two works ago, like I said, was as good as I've ever seen a horse work, so we were, we were quietly confident coming in. Congratulations, Todd. Mike Smith, your second Belmont Stakes victory. You finished second in each Triple Crown race last year, twice with Bodie Meister, Painter here in the Belmont Stakes. How much sweeter is this one now? Uh, it's incredible. You know, God's got a way of making you be patient. Today was our day, and uh, really, Todd, uh, he wrote the perfect play. I mean, it, it, he wrote it, it ran exactly like he wrote it, and I, I wrote it that way myself, and it, it, it just worked out. Great ride, Mike. Congratulations to both of you. Let's go back to Tom. All right, Lafitte, and so a different winner in each of the three Triple Crown races in 2013. It means the best three-year-old still to be decided on races later on, including the Traverse Stakes and, of course, the Breeders' Cup, both of which you'll see on NBC. Tonight at 8 Eastern, the NHL Western Conference Final continues on NBC as the Kings battle the Blackhawks in Game 5. Tomorrow, Rafael Nadal seeks an unprecedented eighth title at the French Open at 9 a.m. So another year without a Triple Crown winner, but not without plenty of excitement. Orb has won the Kentucky Derby for Chipnagee! And it's Oxbow and Gary Stevens to win the Preakness. Gary Stevens did it. It is going to be Palace, Malice, and Mike Smith in the Belmont Stakes. Another memorable year in the books for the Triple Crown. This is Tom Hammond saying so long from the final.